Well, folks, the start of the Premier League season hasn't hasn't been a dream come true, but we aren't a million miles away from the Kev ratio, and I think we'll be fine. I think we will survive, and I'm about to prove it to you. Right, if you weren't here last night, firstly, you should know by now, if you're not here for the stream, you just go to Lelujo 2 the next, the following lunchtime, you get caught up there. So that's the place to get properly caught up. But a very quick summary is the season started rough. It was then okay for a little while. We actually won two Premier League games in a row and then another one not long afterwards. But then it got really rough again and uh, we are now down in 19th place. This has been the shape of the season so far, which is not ideal, but... Crucially, the Kev ratio. If you are new, the Kev ratio is very simple. To be in line with the Kev ratio, you just need as many points as you have games played. If we win our next match, we are level with the Kev ratio. It just so happens that this particular season, it's tight down the bottom. A couple of wins and we're up in mid-table with Manchester United. So I'm not worried by the league table. I'm a little bit worried by the form because, yes, we played some... Decent teams. We played Man City and Chelsea back to back, which are always going to be tough games. Uh, but then Villa, Newcastle, Brentford, I would have looked for more than one point out of Villa, Newcastle, and Brentford. Well, to be fair, only one of those was at home. And it was a tough batch of five games overall. But our next batch of five games, much less tough. Leicester, Arsenal, Crystal Palace, Leeds, and Norwich. We've got to pick up what? Five points from those five games, you reckon? A win and two, if we beat Leeds at home and then beat Palace and, and then draw against Palace and Norwich away, I think that's I think that's fine. It's not ideal, but it's fine. And then our next batch of five, again, we've got some winnable matches. Bournemouth, Forest, Man City, Southampton, Norwich. And I think we want even more wins out of that run. I think by the end of January, we'll be on... 30 points. That might be very ambitious. 25 points. The decision I've got to make is whether or not we go back to the 4-3-3. Because we haven't won in five games in this diamond. We are struggling a little bit with it. The thing is with the diamond, though, is it does make Endrick look good. And that is what this save is all about. It's the Endrick save. Right, we're playing Leicester. I'm probably going to lose. Oh, dear. Do we... Right. This is what I was. I've, this is what I was toying with while I was having my pre-stream poo. Do we go back to the four-three-three? And the question mark really comes down to Finn Azaz, who's on a six-point-five-three for the season. Hmm. The only problem with doing this is then we don't have Beareth in the team who has been playing very well. But does this get more out of Dewey whilst also giving us a more solid defensive base, potentially? They're going to play the uh, the good old-fashioned FM23 flatback six. Did I catch the fish myself? Yes. Yes, I did. I'll give you the tin out the back if Hendrick scores. Right, here we go then. Ricky J. Jones, ball over the top. It's Poku. It's absolute chaos from Leicester. Give it to Hendrick. I want my tin opener. It's Ricky J. Jones. And it's 1-0 to Peterborough. Come on. Beautiful stuff. That's what I'm talking about. A 4-3-3 is the answer. This is what we had to turn to towards the second half of last season when we started to get found out with the diamond. We switched to this for a few matches and it got us over the finish line. I still prefer the diamond, but needs must sometimes. And this probably is going to get the best out of Dewey, who is arguably our best player. Just imagine you stood in Iceland with my fishing rod dangling in the freezer. Yeah, how else do you go to Iceland and get your fish? Because you, uh, you get found out very quickly. For the diamond to work, you need to be able to just keep hold of the ball for ages. Oh, Ricky J. Jones, Mr. Peterbury United. Come on now. Ricky J. Jones. Sir Ricky J. Jones, if he carries on in this manner. We're going to do goal number three. We're going to put this beyond doubt. 
I guess this is the closest we've got to a local derby now we're in the Premier League. I don't think there's anywhere nearer to Peterborough than, than Leicester. And we've doiled them. Oh, my doorbell's ringing. One moment, boys and girls. I'm, I'm pretty sure all of this we already knew. I don't think there was any new information. They have to terminate his contract. Can they afford to terminate his contract? Have they got grounds to terminate his contract? I mean, unless he agrees to a mutual termination, you can't just sack him for speaking. I mean, Jones has just scored two goals from there, so I think it's probably fair to leave Ricky J. Jones in that role. But we are at home against Arsenal, so we're probably going to lose anyway. But we'll leave Jones out there for now. Mods? Have we got any mods in? We must have mods in. Who's a mod? Oh, Martinelli, you disgusting creature. How dare you? Chris is slacking. Yeah, he's probably slacking off editing a video or something like that. I know his game. Are there any mods in? Mods, mods, if you are watching, please pay attention. Mods, do we have any mods? Goodness me. I am literally speaking. Oh, there he is. I'm here, but I've got a clue what you're on about. I see you, Shady. I see you. Um, yeah, we kind of need, we specifically kind of need Chris because he's only timed the guy out. I don't remember his name. Mods, go and find Chris. Chris has gone missing. Mods, please go and find Chris. I mean, just because Chris has got a, uh, a vlog to get out for tomorrow and the highlights of this stream, it's not reason to not be at my every beck and call. <laughs> Look down the bag aisle. Yeah. Oh, Kel Watts, beautiful. He didn't come back, but because of that, I just want him banned. All right, come on, Dewey a football. Dewey is flying down the right-hand side, and he's played Poku in. Look at him go to Endrick. Come on! No, let's not call that offside, referee. Come on. Oh, Civ 6 DLC. That's less exciting. I've had enough Civ 6 DLC now. I'm just waiting for Civ 7. There's my Kabiru's goal against Arsenal. Come on. A draw against Arsenal is a fantastic result if we pull this off. We probably shouldn't be attacking. That is two good results. The 4 3 3 sticks around for a while. Are we playing in two days? Why Why are we playing again in two days? Why is that on a Monday? Have they got some kind of Thursday night football going on? Oh, just stop being rubbish, Manchester United. Europa Conference League, so we have to play on a Monday night. Pathetic. <laughs> oh, my word. Manchester United. The gift that keeps on giving. We're having fun at your expense this evening. Thank you for being the way you are. It's interesting too. I mean, I could get fired at Peter Sports and have no interest in carrying on, so I can't be sure one way or the other that we're going to carry on and do that. But if we end up managing Peter Sports to a Champions League win in 10 months' time, we'll probably go and do one more match there like we did towards the end of the cycle with Leamington. Did Disneyland have a football team? <laughs> Yeah, we'll go and stay at the Marvel Hotel. Awesome. Had a Taco Bell open today, available for delivery tomorrow. So guess what I'm having for dinner tomorrow? Beans on toast. Will I bring Jack with me to Disneyland? If Jack wants a lift to Disneyland, yes. He's not sharing a room with me and Anna. I know. Can we just get knocked out of the Carabao Cup? This is silly. I grew up with no graphics at all in Football Manager. Back in my day, it was all text-based, and it was fine. It was 2D. It was fine. It looks like this, and it's fine. If anything, I do worry that if the graphics become too realistic, it takes away some of the storytelling magic, just how, and this might be me being an old man again, uh, movies are never good as the book that they're based on. 
I don't want everything spelling out for me and everything being clear. I want to allow my imagination to run wild. I want to be able to have some creative license with it. I want to be able to find my own stories. Oh, now that's interesting. Can we take Endrick with us? I just want to be able to reply with, can I bring Endrick back? Can I bring Endrick with me? I suggest I won't be able to. Uh, we all have different interpretations of what's realistic and what's not. We get it, and you see it in the comment section of Nominee to Legend. Every now, every, certainly every time there's a check, the potential for me to move clubs. Oh, the discussion about this is realistic or this isn't realistic. And we all have. We can all be presented with the exact same data and interpret it differently. And, oh, Hendrick's really good. Look at him go. And come to the conclusion that it's realistic or not realistic. And it can be the exact... We've got all the same information, but people have different views on it. And that's where they get a little bit blinkered. Right. Come on, Liam. Oh, lovely ball. Are you going to get doiled again? It's Hendrick! And, I mean, this is his first season in the Premier League at 19 years old, and he's tearing the place up for a team that should be getting relegated. He's basically single-handedly carrying us up to mid-table. So, he's pretty good. Zealand's skin is class for the quick appraising of training. Yeah, but I'm going to... We're just going to put this on so the people at the back can hear clearly. Forget what Zealand says. You don't need to go through and praise loads of people for training. It makes, and I can't emphasize this enough, it makes zero difference. You don't need to do it. Pack that nonsense in. Because it's absolute minimal effort, when it comes through to my inbox, I'll click the box to do it for the one guy it recommends I do it to. You do not need to be going through and praising everybody for training, praising everybody for conduct. Ugh. And if you don't believe me, look at my record against Zealand. Dominate him in the showdowns, beat him in the network game, own him at civilization. Do it my way. <laughs> Goodness me. Hendrick has won European Golden Boy. Hooray! Believe it or not, first Peterborough player in history to win that. I know you'll find that hard to believe. Um, I don't know who this guy is. Max Schutz. Schutzy. Schutz. Max Schutz. That's a great name for a striker. Oh my word. That might be the that might be the best name for a striker. In the history of the world. Bum, bum, bum. Endrick has won another Young Player of the Month award. He's dedicated it to me again. My downstairs bathroom is full of Endrick's accolades now. He does win a lot of them. It's almost as if he's quite good. Is he on the top scorers chart anywhere? Why am I? That's not how you find the top scorers chart, Kev. He must be getting close. Pats and Dacker of Crystal Palace. Mauro Riccardi. Of Southampton. Do you know which giant Norwegian robot doesn't seem to be anywhere on that list? Where's he? Erling Haaland and Harry Kane joint with Rasmus Hoyland in fifth place with Endrick just behind. Weird. What a strange world. Norwich. It's the Building Society derby. The Building Society may not exist anymore. But it is where I had my first full-time job 20 years ago. 20, more than 20. God. 22 years ago, I started as a cashier at the Norwich and Peterborough Building Society. I was once Splat the Cat, their mascot. And now I'm managing in the Building Society Derby. I say I was once inside the suit. I couldn't actually get the suit on properly. The arms came up to about there. I went to a primary school with the branch manager where I worked and she was supposed to deliver a talk while I pratted around in the suit. But I couldn't get in the suit. So me as a 19-year-old had to deliver this talk to a, an assembly full of kids while the 40-year-old branch manager was inside the suit because only she could fit in it. Going with all four of my strikers on the pitch at the same time. What's the worst that can happen here? Come on! We've got all four of them on the pitch. 
How could this go wrong? Elof Meister, thank you very much for two months. I heard the hive, so I subbed. I mean, that is a very sensible reason to sub. What the just happened? Shall we have another look? No, we shouldn't have had another look. It's quite harsh that that goes against Kwanzaa there, I think. Because we're, go we're going again. We're just double checking. I don't see how this is Kwanzaa's fault. So I think his, his header here is completely reasonable. He's just cushioned that down to his goalkeeper behind him. What the goalkeeper is doing there, I do not know. £19.75 million pounds we spent on this guy. <laughs> He's got... He's conceded 43 goals. 19.75 million pounds. When the ball is coming in here, and he's going to land about there, so about a yard behind Kwanzaa with the goalkeeper that far away from him, and a Norwich player just there, there is no scenario where he should be letting that ball bounce. He should, he really, he should be heading it clear. So he should be heading it clear, but he's a ball-playing defender. He's trying to be clever, which is what he's been told to do. So rather than just heading it clear into no man's land and inviting the attack back on him again, he's thought, I know, I know exactly where the goalkeeper is. I can just cushion this header back to him. He can pick it up. We can all breathe a little easier. We can get a counter-attack going. Here we have the ball having been headed going directly towards the exact spot the goalkeeper was stood on. Goalkeeper in mid, running over here animation. The goalkeeper is not running to where the ball was originally going to go. The ball was originally going to go here. He's running away. So he's not, even if Kwanzaa doesn't touch it, the keeper's not getting there. He's running over here. He's running in a different direction. That doesn't give you enough information. I don't really know what, I don't really know how much more I can tell you. Oh, Hendrik! Hendrik! Come on, then! You can report it if you think it might be stolen or abandoned. I think it's probably just one of the neighbours has got a new car. But then they've not moved it for a month. And it's just in my way. I'd like to put my car there. Don't be a Karen. But I want to be able to put my own car out the front of my own house. Oh, here we go. Does this look like Jack? I mean, it's just a baby eating a yogurt. I don't think that means it looks like Jack. It's just a baby eating yogurt. You've dedicated 10 minutes of your life to this. We can't even see the baby for most of this TikTok. It's a woman drying out yogurt that looks absolutely nothing like Jack. Oh, oh, I'm 40 years old. I'm, a, I'm at the halfway point of my life. My clock, my clock is ticking down now. And I just used some of those ticks on that. Right, we've got to beat Bournemouth. This is huge. We are the home team. Bournemouth are just above us in the league. This is, uh, this is the most must win game we've had for ages. Let's doil them. You got doiled. Oh, they nearly did get doiled. And him for 10 minutes. I mean, it's very borderline. It's a borderline case. Well, we needed to win there, really. That's not ideal. Computer science, that's worse than teaching PE. That's not even work. What you're doing there is confusing computer science with ICT. ICT is something I tried to avoid like the plague and rarely had to get involved in. Most of my time was spent actually teaching people to actually program actual computers actually hard work stuff <laughs> still waiting on learning where roles become oh i've got that map we should use that at some point 
I feel like this isn't the time. It's, yeah, do, does no one do Pancake Day for you anymore, Smoothie? This is no good. Invite me to come back in on Pancake Day. I'll sort you out. I'll get my dad to chuck sausage rolls over the fence again. Still in my coffee, though. I'll fight you. You never did. I did it for two years and you never noticed. <laughs> Right, come on, Endrick. Endrick, 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 Endrick. Come on. Beautiful. What is happening here? For goodness sake. Jesse Lingard, eh? Do I recognise any old students now? I didn't recognise him then. I never learnt their names. Oh, what? Football's about to be done. Mike Abirif, come on! Oh, what would I focus on in my second season in League One or Two? Just improving players. Yeah, don't worry about getting promoted just yet. It might happen, but just focus on signing good young players. Oh, the new right back got himself caught out a little bit there, but good, good thing Ronnie Edwards was there to solved the problem but Bellingham has given the ball away in midfield and then Ronnie didn't notice it come over the top of him but it doesn't matter because we do pick up the three points that is crucial it's Sir Andy Murray I guess Sir Phil just seems stupid doesn't it should be Sir Philip what a dream come true for 16 year old Jared Bilbo <laughs> when Pep Blue City will they approach Arteta if so I will Arsenal poach Vieira I expect those are the exact two moves that will happen. And City fans might disagree. But I assume that's exactly what will happen. Oh, look, a Cardi for Southampton again. I mean, that's actually some fine sweeper keeper play. That unfortunately, I forgot Southampton have got a Cardi and Firmino. What's going on here? I like what happened initially from the goalkeeper. But then we've just not dealt with it. Panzo, that's absolute madness from him. If we'd have won our last two matches, Biriff scores there. Ronnie Edwards does score. <laughs> we haven't bought anyone in January. No, we're happy with the squad. Go on, Hendrick. There he is, look. Players ahead of him as well. One of which is Micah Biriff. Referee, get your finger out of your ear. Shh. Come on, ref. We're giving that, surely. Hendrick did well. It's a beautiful finish from Beerif, but no. We get no fun. We're not allowed fun around here. Poppycock. That's never offside. So we are alarmed and worried about him. Oh, God! This goalkeeper. £20 million. Pounds. It's disallowed. Excellent. He knew what he was doing. It said damaged heel, did it? So his foot's completely dislocated. Caprile's fine. He knows what he's doing. Oh, surely! Liam Delap. I think he's offside. Taking off sweeper keeper. No, I want him doing sweeper keeper things. I like sweeper keepers. They add a little bit of fun to the game. This could be relegation right here. Relegation confirmed. He's not even listed as having an injury. Hang on. He is completely fine. We'll take it. So, the question is... Has the 4-3-3 stopped working? Do we go back to the diamond? Because the diamond was working much better at the start of the season. I guess, to be fair, Southampton are... I mean, they are, they're not far above us, but they have got Firmino and Icardi. We didn't lose by a lot against City. We beat Forest. We... The drawing against Bournemouth was annoying. Endrick plays. If Endrick's fit, Endrick plays. Apart from against Doncaster in the next match. 
get four up and sub him off. Exactly. That's the plan. Because he's a player this time last year. I signed for Posh during the beta. And he was good for us in the championship and not good enough for the Premier League. And Endrick is through here. Ricky J. Jones is square of him. He can find him. It is Ricky J. Jones. And it's 1-0 to Peterborough. Beautiful stuff. So much rubbish in the Premier League. Goodness me. Have I played any PvP FM23 yet? I haven't. I doubt I will before the streamer showdown, whenever that ends up being. He's annoying because he shouldn't be this good. He must have had a big boost for FM23. Don't understand. How has Adam Ida got 13 goals? I um, just realised I brought Kwanzaa on after the incident the last time we played Norwich. Absolutely should have brought Ronnie Edwards on. Unless Kwanzaa's got the chance to redeem himself. Near post corner to Kwanzaa. 89th minute. Scores the winner. It'd be beautiful. Ricky J. Jones! He's offside, surely. I'm leaving my arms up, but not getting giddy. This is the compromise position. Come on, surely that counts. It was such a deep cross. Rubbish! Right, here we go. Here comes, here comes the winner. Oh, but it's not for us. Oh, it might be. Maybe it is. No, it's not. Somebody just take hold of the ball. In a blue shirt. Oh God, Kwanzaa facing goal. This is terrifying. I mean, at least he was looking where the goalkeeper was that time. Oh. The amount of offside goals in this game, dot, dot, dot. I imagine to finish that sentence, what you want us to say is, is roughly equivalent to the amount of offside goals in real life. It probably is. <laughs> Run the numbers. Right, boys and girls, I think we are going to wrap it up there. We didn't do anything on deadline day. We've not really got time to play Doncaster before I hit curfew. Um, so we have, I mean, we've improved again. Last night, we started the stream bottom of the league, ended it second bottom. Tonight, we started the stream second bottom, ended up four points clear of Brighton. Although, obviously, they do have a game in hand and presumably we've still got to play them. Tomorrow night, I reckon we can finish the season. As long as the FA Cup doesn't get in the way, 